Uh, I'm Matt Casey. I'm the Senior Product Manager at Jagex, home to the living games of RuneScape and old school RuneScape. So, RuneScape has grown pretty big since release in 2001. We've enjoyed a resurgence in recent years. We're now running at our highest membership levels ever. I believe this is because we've genuinely embraced our community as the leaders of what we do. It's one of our corporate values at Jagex. We're player obsessed. And this is the secret source of living games. So we believe living games are the evolution of live service games. Games that have evergreen design for long-term engagement. Games with active and evolving living worlds that keep players engaged. Games that empower players to have visible impact on shaping the game and games that have meaningful social features that create a sense of belonging. Games that provide out-of-game experiences where players live their game as a hobby. This player obsession means that we engage with and do our best to really understand our players, whether that's through surveys, polls, in-game chat, in person, or through game analytics. We blend all these things together. Today, players not only want to attain mastery of what they're playing, but also feel they're an influential member of a community. And so we empower them by giving them more than just a say. They're more like our shareholders. Our live streams are their investor calls. Our deep diving polls are their meeting votes. Their input contributes to how the game evolves. And when you can give someone the feeling that they've got a stake in the game's future, they're in it for the long game, which is good because RuneScape's pretty long. So let's start with some of the rules of engagement that we've learned along the way. So engagement with the game. By updating the game, keeping it fresh and exciting, hugely important. Almost since the start, our RuneScape games have had weekly updates. So that's 18 years of new content, quests, locations, monsters, and equipment added every week. This makes the game world feel vibrant and active, a place that's truly alive. There's always something going on in our living world, and it's an exciting, sometimes unpredictable place to be. The challenge is to change the world, add to it in a way that doesn't feel predictable, and allow player curiosity to become a reason for players to stay, as well as the reason to come back. Engagement through content. We've created in-game social experiences that enable meaningful player-to-player -player engagement. This is content that connects players, brings them together to collaborate in a significant way. This is different to being auto-joined into a clan after 10 minutes where you don't know anyone and all you're seeing is a list of people on the screen. Instead, we aim to offer deep social connections where you're in the same game world as someone else, facing perils together, tackling opportunities and solving problems. Or just enjoying an activ uh, activity together like deep sea fishing, an offshore hub where players join together to cast their nets and reel in their fishing XP together. Or hunting dinosaurs, another big game in our new landmass releasing this summer called The Land Out of Time. This provides a genuine emotional connection between players working together and enjoying each other's time in the game. It goes beyond the one-to-one -one interactions to clan connections and wider social groups. Friendships and rivalries between communities are the things that make it really exciting. So, how do you listen to individual player voices, but also pay them attention as the audience scales? We found that an aggregation of data analytics and personal player input provides our best way of reacting to what players were saying at scale. We can all review data, but going the extra mile and giving players the personal touch, entering into a real dialogue, is where it really becomes a two-way street. So we've created multiple ways for studio to player and player to studio engagement. <coughs> a particular focus is on our live stream schedule, which gives us a platform to talk to and discuss content with our players. We do our live streams almost every day. So it's simple, entertaining, a peek behind the curtain for players and millions of views for us over the years. And in a move that would normally give any social media manager a nightmare, we've taken our Twitter approach one massive step further. We have around 150 JMODs, Jagex moderators, our developers, with their own official Jagex Twitter accounts. 
This provides a deeper and direct level of engagement on specific development disciplines, much more than one social manager could hope to offer. We also found that personal engagement works when we reached into the real world as well. Whether it's inviting players to our studio, organising player meetups, we do a big annual fan convention. Bringing people together with our dev teams, not just the community managers, is at the heart of each event. Simple player visits have become a key part of our content development process. They started as marketing-led fan visits, but now we've evolved this. Our invitations to players to visit us focus on the best RuneScape players in the world. Selected through analytics, we'll fly them in from literally anywhere in the world to test, feedback and test again. It's a full consultative loop that makes them part of the team on a specific piece of content. And then, when you scale up, you can go big with a fan festival. Ours is RuneFest. We're privileged to have a large community to participate in such big events as these. But we started small, and it's totally scalable. There's no reason why a pub room takeover couldn't be a starting point and follow the same golden rules as we do for RuneFest, a space where players meet each other, players meet the developers, and we play the game together. We want our players to be more than just listened to. We want them to see that they have a visible impact on shaping the game. Because the more players have a say in the game that's being made, the more they're personally invested in it. So we empower them to put those needs and desires into game-changing actions. Through engagement, it's no surprise that we see different tastes and different appetites for different content emerge from the community to the point where factions or even larger divides become apparent within that community. Six years ago, after RuneScape had been evolving for over 10 years, there was an increasing tension between the traditionalist players who wanted the game kept as it used to be versus the more progressive players who wanted it to evolve and modernise. So we offered our community the chance to split the game into two. So here's the offer we put on the table to the player base. We would keep evolving the contemporary RuneScape, but also bring out old school RuneScape, a slice of the game as it was frozen in time in 2007 with all its PvP, vintage style and retro looks. So we put that to the player vote. Almost half a million players voted on it and made it happen. So six years ago, the old school servers went live and so begun the longest running AB test in RuneScape's history. Today, old school is our biggest investment in an example of player empowerment. We continue to run the player vote system in old school to introduce player guided content and mechanics into the game. So any change to the game requires a poll to pass with a voting majority in favour. So in five years of running player polls in old school, we've offered up 1,700 player polls, of which 95% of them have passed the player vote. So the 5% of proposed updates that haven't passed haven't been missed. We honestly feel that their player-decided rejection hasn't been to the detriment of the game. And through the polls, old-school players feel the game is theirs. We've made them co-producers. It's been a major part of old-school success, and it's an all-time peak right now, since making the leap onto mobile. So our content guys have to pitch the updates to the community, sharing design documents, discussing the plans in the live streams, and then the player poll kicks in. It's not just a binary yes-no vote. This questions all aspects of a proposed piece of content. For example, the Theatre of Blood was proposed as a new progression raid, the second piece of raid content ever for the game. The poll took players through 15 layers of questions, opening with a simple, should we have the theatre of blood in old school, and then took players into deep decision-making with over a dozen individual questions, engaging over 40,000 players to give their overall green light for the content. From polling everything in old school, RuneScape itself also runs annual player surveys. This helps us to paint the big picture, what's important to our players, what do they want to change, and what do they want to see introduced over the next 12 months? We show them the list of forthcoming content and updates, and we ask them to vote and prioritise what they want first. They're empowered then to feed into the product roadmap. They stay with the game because they want to see how their preference in the vote outcome will affect the game's evolution over the next 12 months. Through engagement and empowerment, players feel genuine emotional investment in the future of the game world and their community. If you listen, you make a better product through that feedback cycle. 
Players are happier with the game and are more loyal. And more to the point, you can measure it. So obviously there are everyone's regular KPIs and there's customer satisfaction, as well as plenty of anecdotal information that our players delight in expressing as memes. So memes have come to be an essential part of online culture, <clears throat> and that's true within our community too. We find that these memes give us a good sense of the current mood within different pockets of the player community, and we've also taken some of these into the game. So recently, a derided piece of concept art for a new armour became meme. Uh, a community talking point, which we engaged with, using it and the player's sentiment to make something better. After weeks of non-stop memeing, our developers and our fans came together with a common goal and turned a bunch of Reddit memes into the best armour in old school RuneScape. So for all the memes, the majority of players genuinely wanted to help us improve the game. And in this case, they weren't happy, they offered suggestions, and because we acted on them, everyone got a better piece of content. But coming back to player satisfaction, we wanted to take this idea a bit further, be more granular, and understand player satisfaction as one of our live reporting outputs. So we've introduced live in-game player satisfaction tracking so we can see the impact of game updates, community issues, and engagement each day in almost real time. And we can see these levels live. What's interesting is that some players always vote thumbs up to everything, and of course, because games, some players always vote thumbs down. Those who keep changing, however, tell us much, much more and give us valuable insights into player sentiment that goes beyond the echo chamber of the vocal minority on social media. So this information all feeds into the full consultative loop that our players have with our developers and has been adopted across our products as one of our core KPIs. Right now, our engagement and empowerment is paying off with player satisfaction at 90%. So, in conclusion, dealing with communities and keeping them on side is challenging and a major investment, but it's key to operating a live game, or if you follow this progressive approach, a living game. Yes, you need to scale at different points of a game's life cycle, and as the number of players and the size of your studio grows, it gets more complicated. But the benefits, players become invested in an experience that helps their opinion shape They'll stick around to see how you implement their decisions. The game reflects evolving player preference, leading to higher levels of satisfaction and retention. Those players who play together stay together. Our engaged community play longer and have a 100% higher LTV. They came for the game and they're staying as part of an engaged and empowered community. Thank you. I hope I can answer your question. RuneScape is, is a legend. Right, <laughs> like literally, and um, for anyone, like I, I saw many, many, many talks about uh, Rootscape, and I think I think it's the first one about the community as a whole, which is fantastic because only games that's been operating for so long with such a huge community can yeah. reach that level, and uh, um, but otherwise you've been through uh, so many iteration of updates uh, through the years. Uh, there's a lot to learn of just playing the game. So anyway, so anyone has questions for Matt? Hi. Hey. Um, is there a reason you don't... Uh, wait, but, uh, before I say is there a reason you don't, um, do you offer the polling system that you offer in uh, Classic RuneScape on the new version? Uh, yeah, we do. Um, we don't do it to the same level. So with old school, we kind of made the decision that every single piece of updated content needed to pass uh, a 75% player poll. The reason... Um, we, and we, sorry, we do have polls in, old, uh, in classic RuneScape as well. Sorry, not classic RuneScape, the normal modern RuneScape as well. I get confused. Um, the reason for the difference in approach is it's basically how we see it. Like, old school is like the National Trust building. It's, it's heritage. It's about what players want kept pure and untouched. RuneScape um, is more like a theme park where we want to fill it with new thrill rides, and basically surprise our players with new and exciting stuff. So more experimentation goes on, more new unexpected things happen, and as such, we don't always poll that because it, it, it's just a different way of thinking about it. If in, say, 10 years' time, <laughs> uh, more drastic changes come about, because you can see clearly the difference, um, I, I think it's about a chance to do it? Yeah, I think it's more about why... Uh, that group of players exists. So we're talking a time about 10 years ago when a lot of people encountered RuneScape for the first time, probably at school, 
you know, in the IT labs, um, and it represents a, a period in their life that really means something to them. That won't change. It will stay with them forever. If you say the people that come to RuneScape 10 years later, will they still have that nostalgic feeling, or are they looking for a different experience? So I suspect it won't be like that, and I, I suspect we, you know, we've, we've split that portion off, and it will stay there for the purists. Meanwhile, the, 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 the next generation of RuneScape players will evolve. So regarding communities, we have another question, but I just want to jump in and say that um, if, you, if you want to learn how to manage a uh, community, you can look, uh, there's a few books about, about how to manage a summer camp, <laughs> right? <laughs> and how to introduce new activities for the kids, how to bring like uh, contextual uh, stories on top of all the activities. Like there, these books about summer camps is literally the one-on-one -on -one of communities. So I, I encourage you to read that. So, yeah, thank you for the talk. Um, you say that you let them vote and execute what they vote. Has it ever backfired on you? That they were like, we want this, we need this, this is awesome, it got implemented, and it got and backfired? Not backfired as such, but there have been times when we've um, made work on development, um, and then we've not been able to get it past the player poll. So we've had to basically put that on, on ice. Um, but we think it's the right decision um, because you know, we're, we're better informed to validate the choices we're making. Um, so we don't look at it as wasted work. We look at it as a, a learning. Um, so, and yeah, as I said in the talk, it's about represents about 5% of all the updates that we've ever done on old school. Um, so, so yeah, it, it's not that we, we, we won't like retreat and back down if we're wrong. Um, but yeah, we try and keep it to a minimum. <laughs> Um, how much time and investment and manpower goes into the tools that you guys are actually using for the survey uh, driven stuff for the, the thumbs up, the thumbs down, uh, the processing of all that data, right? Um, Hello, uh, nice talk, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Um, there's lots of ways to answer that question. Um, so the amount of time that goes into the tools is probably not as much as you'd think because we don't have tools for it. Um, a lot of this stuff we've coded because we're talking about legacy tech going back sort of years and years and years. So we don't have like hugely modern tools for this kind of stuff built into the game system. A lot of it we've developed ourselves along the way. Um, however, we're now working with really modern, up-to-date kind of data analytics and, and basically building the bridges between those systems so that we can really mine that information and get, get, get kind of really deep into it. Um, but yeah, it's probably an area where there's uh, an awful lot we could invest in to expand on the tools. It's a challenge with a game of 18 years old. There's a, a few talks uh, about Yagex on YouTube that you can watch of like five years ago, 10 years ago, about feature that, that they spent months to develop and then it moved the needle of like 0.5% <laughs> of the user base. Those are excellent stories, so I encourage you all to go and watch those videos. Thank you so much, Matt. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.